How does your body inhale negative air ions? In this video, I will be discussing inhaling negative ions for your health. First, we have to talk about subatomic molecules. An atom is a tenth of a nanometer thick. Danny DeVito at 4 feet 10 inches tall is about 10 billion times larger than an atom and 1 billion times smaller than the diameter of the sun. A piece of paper is 100,000 nanometers thick. Electrons attaching to air molecules. An ionizer emits free electrons. It uses electricity to emit these electrons at the tip of the electrode. The electrode could be made out of metal or carbon fiber bristles, the same bristles you would find in a brush. The emitted electrons immediately attach to nearby air molecules and thus the molecule becomes an air ion. Now here you can see the needle tip. There is an electron attaches to the oxygen molecule. The oxygen molecule becomes an ion. And I'm going to give one more example here as the oxygen molecule goes near the ionizer, it becomes ionized and it comes out as an ion. Different types of negative air ions. There are many kinds that constantly evolve while they are in the air. There, some of them are different sizes, mobilities, the initial air quality in your room can change the type of initial ions you get from your air ionizer. They constantly evolve by transferring electrons. Some of the ions move quicker, wider. It really depends on many variables. Ions constantly transfer electrons to molecules. As an air ion travels in the air, the same electron constantly transfers between molecules like a baton during a track race. As you can see in the animated GIF, the electron bounces from one molecule to the next, and in the next animated GIF you can see you know, passing a baton during a track race. That's how these ions evolve in the air. Here is an example of electron transfer. The first molecule is an ion. It gives the second molecule its extra electron. Now the second molecule becomes an ion. Here is another example of electron transfer. The first molecule is an ion. It gives the second molecule an electron, but one electron bounces off. Sometimes this happens. A lot of this is theories. We really don't know what electrons do in these subatomic molecules. We just have theories. Oxygen becoming an ion. As you can see in this image, oxygen receives two electrons. Why two? Because O2 means two molecules of oxygen. And in the second image, ionic radius, you can see when an ion is positively charged, it becomes smaller. When it becomes negatively charged, it becomes larger. That's because the electron is on the outer realm and it just gives it a larger size. Neutral atom to ion. As you can see, the first atom gives an electron to the second atom, and the second atom becomes larger because it has an extra electron, therefore it is an ion. An ionized atom. As you can see, the electron is going around the atom, and as it's going around, it's going around in what physicists refer to as a cloud. This is why I use the glow effect. Ion strength. When the ion initially comes out of the ionizer, it's very strong. 30 seconds later, it's not as strong. 60 seconds later, it might become a weak ion. About two minutes later, it might not no longer be an ion. This depends on many variables like the distance from the ionizer or frequency of ions being emitted. Now, what happens to the ionized molecule? Well, the photon eventually leaves and the electron gets knocked back down and that's why it's no longer ionized. Photon enhanced synergies. Photons as waves can penetrate the body and excite electrons. When a photon hits a molecule, the electron gets energy. They call it an excited state and it can do what it needs to do. Eight, between 800 and 940 nanometer wavelengths are the best for deep tissue to accomplish this goal. 
as you can see in this image we have uh, different wavelengths as you can see UV light it can barely penetrate the skin now here is an example of red light therapy and the photons being emitted and it touches the molecule the molecule absorbs it the electron becomes excited therefore this becomes an ion quality matters if you have poor air quality in the room you would not inhale as many ions particulate matter total volatile organic compounds along with humidity monitors are important an ionizer works best at 40 to 60 percent humidity it'll work outside this range but that's the best range to get you know the best ions ionizer quality matters nearly all ionizers are not good quality using an emf meter isn't a good idea but it's the only reasonable priced option to test an ionizer low quality ionizers will not emit a strong electric field this measurement is not perfect just for demonstration so as you can see in this image i'm testing two ionizers one of the ionizers had more ions yet a weaker field which one was stronger the one with a stronger field now let's start talking about our bodies electron acceptors and donors electron acceptors are ions or molecules that act as oxidizing agents in chemical reactions electron donors are ions or molecules that donate electrons and are reducing agents vitamin c is an antioxidant because it donates an electron now you can see in this image on the right i have an example of an electron transfer and this is what vitamin c does in your body the electron transport chain inside our bodies the electron transport chain is a process that involves electrons being passed from one molecule to another the energy released in these electron transfers is used to form an electrochemical gradient the energy stored in the gradient is used to make adenosine triphosphate atp is a source of energy for use and storage at the cellular level cellular ion channels ion channels are pore forming membrane proteins that allow ions to pass through the channel pore their functions include establishing a resting membrane potential shaping action potentials and other electrical signals by gating the flow of ions across the cell membrane controlling the flow of ions across cells and regulating cell volume ion channels are present in the membranes of all cells so every cell in your body has an ion channel these ions are the same ones we have been discussing. Positive and negative ions working together. Positive calcium ions are involved in cell gap junction inside our cells. Negative ions are theorized in activating gap junction receptors. As the receptor becomes negatively charged, positive ions are attracted to the area. As you can see in this image, some cells are very tightly together and some of them are loose as you can see in the second image this has to do with calcium positive ions activity and this is just an example of how ions you know maintain our bodies theory of positive and negative ions working together to seal the gap between two cells as you can see the positive ion tries to go through the gap but it gets blocked because the receptor is not activated when this happens pathogens can go right on through that is not good now in the second example let's see what happens when we have a negative ion inside the cell the negative ion travels to the receptor cell and it activates it and then now it the positive ion is able to get through so as a positive ion goes through, it allows the cell to close back up. Now this is just a theory, but they have seen these receptor cells on these channels. From ions to electron transfer to ion channels. Now we know negative air ions have an extra electron that it will donate transfer between molecules electron transport chain exists within the human body ion channels exist in every single cell of the body 
positive and negative ions work together, the human body has over 37 trillion cells. And each one of these cells have ion channels. So how do we actually inhale these ions inside our bodies? Well, let's find out. Here we have an example of an air ion entering the respiratory system and deep into the lungs. And then the ion goes through the bronchi into the voli. From there, it's deep in the voli and this is where gas exchange happens. The ion goes through the gas exchange and attaches itself to a red blood cell. Here is another demonstration of the oxygen ion molecule going inside the red blood cell. Inside the cell, it travels through the body to the heart where this ion can now have access to the entire body and it can deliver the extra electron where it's needed. As you can see from this image, it shows the process of how an ion travels and wherever the electron is needed, it will be donated. Electrons throughout the body. Each circulation takes about one minute. Approximately 84% of the cells in the human body are 20 to 30 trillion red blood cells. As you can see in this image, the ion oxygen molecule is transferred into the tissue cells. Other ways ions are inhaled. Our skin can actually absorb air ions, but it won't reach the bloodstream. Eyes, ears, even open wounds can absorb ions. They have studies where they use air ionizers on wounds where the wounds healed much quicker as a result. Local cells throughout the entire respiratory system can also absorb ions. So as an ion goes inside your nose, it can be taken in there. So why do we even need electrons? Well, it helps circulate oxygen throughout the body, increases energy for use in storage at the cellular level, aids in intercellular communication, and there are countless more examples. Here in this image, this shows all the advantages you can get by absorbing or inhaling electrons. We especially need electrons when we are sick. It has been demonstrated that in liquid solutions, vitamin C emits solvated electrons when excited in a single state. When ill, free radicals are formed at a faster rate than high energy electrons are made available. Vitamin C, as an antioxidant, donates its electron. This is the sole purpose of vitamin C. This is what vitamin C does in our bodies. That's all it does. It gives free electrons. That's why it's a vitamin. Electron transfer from vitamins. Antioxidants neutralize free radicals by giving up some of their own electrons. In making this sacrifice, they act as a natural off switch for the free radicals. This helps break a chain reaction that can affect other molecules in the cell and other cells in the, in the body. As you can see in this image, vitamin C can donate an electron to vitamin E, and vitamin E can donate an electron to a molecule that needs it in the body that would have otherwise caused membrane damage. Vitamin C absorption. As we're eating an orange, which has you know high vitamin C, it goes in the stomach, in the small intestine, then it gets into the blood and it can transfer electrons. Now, an orange, or vitamin C I should say, travels in the blood plasma, not in the blood cell like an air ion would, but they both reach the same tissue cells. Electron donors. Eating an orange or inhaling an air ion, it's the same electron. You can try to argue it's not, but it's an electron, it's an electron. Vitamin C could show up in the blood plasma in about 45 minutes. Inhaling air ions could show up about instantly. Now, I'm not saying to stop eating oranges. Of course not. But I'm saying it's not that difficult to understand this concept. Again, here is an example of electron absorption. 
as an air ion travels inside the red blood cell along with vitamin T in the plasma, they both get delivered to the same tissue. It's the same process. Electrons from earthing. Earthing or grounding is just another form of electron transfer like air ions. These thermal images are of a patient with pain in the area of both knees. They were taken a half hour apart before and after earthing. Tissue damage generates heat represented by the hot colors on the left. The difference shows a clear and rapid resolution of inflammation. So again, just inhaling or absorbing electrons heals the body. Earthing is very similar to air ionization. Cell phone radiation. When radiation penetrates the body, it knocks out electrons from biological molecules. There is an increase in intracellular positive calcium ions in the brain as a result of the cellular effects of this exposure. Reduced levels of vitamin C were also determined in the brain. Again, this is exactly what we've been talking about. Vitamin T is an electron donor. When you have more positive calcium ions, you're going to have less vitamin C. This is how cell phone radiation could affect us. Inhaling negative ions could offset this radiation. And that's pretty much it. Electrons transfer through ions from the air into our bodies. The electron transport chain exists within the body. Our bodies have ion channels. Electrons are necessary for the immune system and all functions of life. Uh, be sure to check out the blog. I got many more videos coming. Please let me know if you have any questions.